Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. In this video we're going to look at how you can use Google's Notebook LM to explore and deepen your understanding of any research materials that you want to explore. Notebook LM is an AI powered research assistant developed by Google. It allows you to upload your own documents, be these PDFs, websites, Google Docs, YouTube videos and so on. And what it does is it allows you to get instant insights by interacting with them using the built-in AI. You can review the sources for the answers and get not just the results, but you can also create podcasts that you can listen to and learn from on the go. Another interesting thing is, is that it doesn't use your data to train Notebook LM though I'd advise against uploading any sensitive materials. I've been using it for a while now and I think it's a great tool that can save you time by summarising, explaining and helping you connect ideas across your sources no matter how complex they are. So whether you're a student, a researcher or a practitioner in any discipline, you can use the AI in Google's Notebook LM to question, explore and gain valuable insights into academic and professional materials. In this video I'm going to use three peer-researched journal articles from a research project I worked on. I was part of a team that undertook fieldwork and produced these papers which are open access and available for download. If you're interested in reading these articles I'll put a link in the information section below. But you can upload whatever sources you want to explore. So let me show you how it works. Go to notebooklm.google Sign in with your Google account Click Create New Notebook. Close the Add Windows Sources for now. We'll come back to that later. Then name the notebook something like Relationship Based Practice. You can upload up to 50 documents that you want to explore. These can be academic articles, practice guidelines, supervision notes or even reflective journals. As I mentioned before, I'm uploading my PDF articles that have been published and are available open access papers. I've downloaded them as PDFs and can upload them to Notebook LM. And if you have other sources such as your own case studies and training materials, you can upload these too. You can see that the sources appear in the left hand sources window. The other two windows are chat and studio and we'll explore these shortly. Now let's be honest, whatever topic you choose to explore, if you're writing an essay, creating a presentation, conducting research or preparing for things like supervision, topics like relationship based practice or any other subject can contain literature that can be quite dense and complex. The beauty of Notebook LM is that it can help you break down this information into manageable chunks, reflect on it and apply it all using material of your own choosing. Once the sources have been uploaded, a short summary of the sources appears in the chat window. If you click on each source, for example the first one, Notebook LM will automatically generate a list of key topics and provide a summary of the source. This window is great because it gives you a quick overview of each document's contribution to the topic that you want to explore. You can close the source window by clicking this icon. In the middle window I can use the AI chat to ask questions from my three selected sources. For example, I can ask what are the key components of relationship based practice? Depending on the number of sources Notebook LM has to search, it may take a few minutes to analyse and respond to your questions. What's handy is, is that it will also suggest some of its own questions in the chat box. Now here you can see that it draws out the component of a holding relationship and if I hover over the one it will show me the source for the information. Scrolling through the response I can see that it's provided a very in-depth response to the question I posed. And again it provides citations from my uploaded sources and the sections from where it's drawn the information. And this is really great because it gives me confidence in terms of the information being presented to me. I'll come back to this chat feature later and show you how you can make notes that you can refer to later. Now I'm quite a visual learner and what helps me is mind maps and Notebook LM offers you this facility. If we go to the studio window and look at the notes section there is a mind map window here where I've already created a mind map looking at social work relationships focusing on hostile versus holding relationships. 
If I click on the node hostile relationships, I can click on definitions that then expands into more detail of each element. What I really like is that I can then zoom in and click on the case examples from the papers like the Joneses family to get more detail and explore what the sources say about parents interrupting, shouting, etc. in relation to the Jones family case. There is so much that you can explore, especially if you're a visual learner like me. This mind map really helps you visualize and connect concepts such as psychosocial dynamics by exploring topics like social power imbalances, stigma, social workers as bad objects, transference and counter-transference, as well as a range of others. I love this feature and would encourage you to explore it. I find it really helps me organize my thoughts. Notebook LM can also suggest other relevant academic or policy documents to expand your understanding. This is especially useful for students, researchers, and for continuing professional development. In the source window, click on the discover button. In relation to this topic, I would be interested in finding sources related to, for example, attachment theory. I'd type that in and click submit. It then finds and presents a set of sources that I can review and import if I choose to. This can save me a lot of time. If you are new to a topic, Notebook LM can also help you learn quickly by creating useful things such as study guides, briefing documents, frequently asked questions and timelines. If you go to the studio window and click on the study guide button, for example, using the three sources selected in the sources window, it will generate a new note. Click on the note and within seconds you will have a study guide on relationships and social work. This is really fantastic. It's really detailed and draws out the main components in an understandable way. I really wish I had access to Notebook LM when I was a student. This would have made my studies so much easier. But remember that you need to check what has been generated because at the bottom of the screen you'll see a disclaimer that says Notebook LM can be inaccurate. Please double check its responses and it's important to do this. So far I hope you agree that this is all really good stuff but you know what there's more. Now here's where for me it gets really exciting. Once you've explored your materials in Notebook LM why not turn your insights into a podcast episode? This is a brilliant way to listen, learn, reflect and share your knowledge. You can see that I have three sources selected. If I go to the studio window, I can create a deep dive conversation based on these materials. All I have to do is hit the generate button and depending on the number of sources, obviously the more sources the longer it'll take. After a few minutes, Notebook LM creates a 20 minute podcast for me. Let's have a listen to a short section at the beginning. How do you genuinely help someone who absolutely does not want your help? I mean, especially when that help comes wrapped in state authority with the power to make huge life altering decisions. It's such a fundamental challenge, isn't it? You know, you might assume these kinds of professional relationships are always built on mutual trust empowerment. Right. That's the ideal. But the reality, particularly when you get into sensitive areas like child protection, it's just well, it's far more complex, often intensely difficult. Yeah, and that's why today we're doing a deep dive into this incredibly intricate world. We're looking specifically at social work relationships with uh, what are often called involuntary service users. Isn't this amazing? I've listened to the whole podcast and can tell you that it's accurate and draws on the source research materials in an engaging and thoughtful way. What's great is that once the podcast has been created, you can share it by clicking on the share audio overview. Click to make it publicly accessible. Then copy the share link and share the podcast. I have shared a couple of podcasts based on these research materials and my students have reported back that reading the sources and listening to the podcasts made the materials much more engaging and understandable. But you know what? There is more. There's this new beta interactive mode. I love this feature. It allows me to engage with the podcasters. Watch this. If you click on the beta button, the podcast will start and you can click the join button. 
and one of the hosts will acknowledge you and ask a question. How do you genuinely help someone who absolutely does not want your help? I mean, especially when that help comes wrapped in state authority with the power to make huge life... Oh, hey there, how can we help? The question I want to ask is, how would you define a hostile relationship? Let's listen to the response. That is such a great question, and it's actually central to what we're talking about today. Absolutely. The research we're drawing from really tries to nail down what that feels like. So a hostile relationship in this context is one where you see deep mistrust, fear, even outright aggression. It's not just a one-sided thing, though. It's often mutual, with both the social worker and the service user feeling these intense negative emotions. And it's sustained over time. It's not just a single bad interaction. Exactly. It's a relationship where conflict and resistance are the norm especially during face-to-face -face encounters like home visits. The paper even talks about how anxiety and other intense feelings are often avoided by both individuals and organizations. I'm actually really quite amazed by these responses because they actually draw on the research and respond in a way that makes the findings accessible using what I would argue is everyday language. For example, it defines what is a hostile relationship. It talks about mistrust, fear, aggression, that it's not just one-sided and can be sustained over time, and individuals and organisations may try to avoid these intense feelings. And this is what our research actually found. I'm impressed with the way this interactive element also allows me to engage verbally, like as though I was a guest on the podcast. I really can't wait to see what the non-beta version, the final version, actually will be able to do. OK, so finally, let's go back to the chat function. Here you can pose questions such as, tell me three lessons that can help me develop my relationship-based practice. What Notebook LM will do is explore the sources and draw out three lessons for me. And if I click on the numbers, it will refer me back to the original sources, which again gives me confidence that the responses are grounded in the research in the source materials. Notebook LM will also suggest some questions for me in the chat box, which I really find quite helpful. If I'm happy with the materials generated, I can save these as a note. To access the note, go to the Studio window and click Studio Panel icon, and you can locate the note here for use for later on. I found the tools in Notebook LM really make accessing and working with research and other materials really easy and helpful. And this enables me to work with really dense and complex materials in an easy way, allowing me to gain insights and create learning resources that can help others understand these topics. Whether you're preparing for an assignment, writing a research paper, or reflecting on your practice, Notebook LM is a powerful tool. It helps you engage critically with your sources, make connections and deepen your understanding of any topic you want to explore. We've only really explored some elements of this powerful tool and I would encourage you to make an account, it's free, and have a play. Trust me, you won't regret it. If you found this guide helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and do subscribe for more videos and insights. And let me know in the comments section below how you're using AI in your learning or practice. Until next time, I look forward to seeing you again. Bye.